Hey guys, welcome to another film study video. This time we're going to be looking at Andre S.O.G. Ward um, and uh, versus uh, Carl Froch. So with that said, on to the video. Okay, so here in round one, uh, you see how uh, Andre Ward actually sets up a, a jab down to the body. You see him first, he shows Carl Froch that lead hand twice, he sh kind of shows it to him. Then you see him change levels, so what that does is that now leaves Carl Froch, at least Froch in a bad situation because he already seen that lead hand as a distraction device twice, implying that Ward was going to shoot a jab to the head, but then now that Ward has changed levels, now Froch doesn't know if the jab is coming to the head or if it's coming down to the body. So Ward uses that moment of indecision to then show him just kind of moves his lead hand around again. Ward uh, Froch doesn't know which direction this jab is going to go. And Ward shoots it down to the body, really around chest level. Now, even more important than the jab down to the body is look how defensively responsible Ward is when he shoots his jab. You see how he gets very low. And he changes head slots, he moves his head out of the way, and you see how he immediately evades this punch from Froch. And look at that, look at him using his feet to step back from the punch, preemptively avoiding and shutting down Froch's counterattack. Beautiful. Here you see Andre Ward establishing range with his lead hand. You can see him using his lead hand to establish range in case he has to come with a jab or with a right, with a straight right. You see him; he shows that lead hand. It's acting as both both a distraction device. He's using it to occupy Carl Froch's uh, guard upstairs. You notice how Carl Froch gets a little bit jumpy, gets a little bit kind of uh, you know uneasy every time he sees that lead hand. And then you see. Carl Froch shoot his jab. Andre Ward just pulls from the jab. Just pulls from the jab and just comes back with his own jab. This is the difference between a good fighter and an elite fighter. Um, a good fighter, you know, he has all these things. An elite fighter like Andre Ward will make you miss and then he'll counter you after you miss. And then he immediately goes into some form of clinch uh, to prevent Froch coming back. Okay, now in the beginning of round five, you're going to see what, in my opinion, is really some outstanding boxing from Andre Ward. Um, really everything that combines to make you an, an elite fighter. So you, you see a very, very smart fighter by the name of Andre Ward begin round five by shooting the jab down to the body. All right, you see him shoot the jab down to the body. Uh, but off the jab to the body is where the magic really begins because you see... Andre Ward using something which I talk about all the time, which is head control. So here you see Andre Ward actually put his hands on Carl Froch and control Carl Froch. Right, so as he controls Froch with, his, with, with head control, notice how off of the head control, as soon as he releases Froch's head from his head control, notice how he immediately fires off a beautiful, just a beautiful left hook and swivels and spins off to his left. This is this is wonderful boxing because here you see him control his head, then he fires a left hook off of the head control, and then look at him change position, look at him change angles, look at him bring that rear, uh, his rear foot down and change angles, change distance. Just amazing boxing from Andre Ward. Here you see Ward and Froch in a clinch, and uh, you see Ward he, ma he manages to fire off the shot to the body, right? He fires off this left uppercut to the body. Now, the beauty of Andre Ward is just in the little things he does. I mean, it really is amazing. Look at him after he fires this left hook, this left uppercut down to the body. 
Look at how he uses his right hand. Now, loads of people miss this. He used his right hand. Look at his right glove. He How he uses that to control Carl Froch. He keeps Carl Froch in the same position with his right hand. Notice his right hand is performing is performing some form of control on Carl Froch's position. After he controls Carl Froch, notice how he uses that opportunity. He uses the opportunity of controlling Froch to change positions. Watch his feet movement. Look at look at how he moves off to Froch's right side. Well, sorry, to Froch's uh, left side, but your right side as you're watching Andre Ward. Notice how he takes a step to the right. And off the back of that step, he shoots with left hook. I mean, what can I say about a guy like this? So you mean to tell me that he's able to fire off a body shot? Then he's able to use his right hand to control this guy. He controls this guy, and then he takes a step, just a small step to the right, changes angles completely, and fires off a beautiful left hook. And I look at him defensively responsible. Now, what what do you, what do you see Ward doing here? He covers up. I look at him bobbing and weaving even though Froch isn't shooting any punches. Now, this is what an elite fighter does. He's preemptively protecting himself in case something was coming back. Beautiful boxing. Here you have a guy shoot a jab. So Ward, Andre Ward shoots his jab. Now notice how as soon as he shoots that jab, he kind of leaves it, just kind of leaves it hanging. And he moves his hand, his left hand, watch his left, his, his jab hand. He moves it to, to, to control Froch's left shoulder, right? He momentarily controls Froch's left shoulder. Shoulder. This prevents any return fire from Froch at this particular time. But as soon as he goes from that, like a laser-guided weapon, his left hand goes from controlling Froch's shoulder momentarily, like a laser to his head, and he immediately begins head control. Of Froch. I talk about head control all the damn time because it's just that important. And as you see the head control, the beauty of this is he moves from the head control. Look, oh my goodness, I'm at me. Look at the, as he's controlling Froch's head, look at the, look at how he's moving and changing position and angles. Look how he takes a, side, a slight step to his right. And then look how he, Look how he changes positioning and then fires his right hand across. And look how he loads up on the punch as well to fire that punch across. The beauty about what you're seeing here is that he's a technician. What he's done is from controlling Froch's head and taking this quick sidestep to the right, he's changing the weight of his body to the right side of his body. And then he's able to then pump that weight through his arms into Froch's face via the right cross, and then now the weight is now on the left side of his body. This is beautiful to watch. He is a technician. Here you see uh, Carl Froch shoot his jab. Right, he shoots his jab. Andre Ward is just watching both of those shoulders, just watching what's, what what Froch is gonna do. You can read him like a book. War, uh, Froch shoots his jab. Andre Ward slips that jab, and also parries it as well for good measure. He puts his um, right glove in there, like in the parry. He kind of parries the jab as well. He slips it and he parries it for good measure. Then he comes back with his right hand, comes back with his right hand, catches um, Froch at the top of his head, kind of around his temple area. Froch also tries to protect himself, but I don't think he protects himself. I think that punch gets through. So Ward catches him. And then the beauty of this is, is a combination. So that right hand comes over the top, and then you have that left, beautiful left hook, or left uppercut right down the side, catching Froch clean. The whole time Ward is defensively responsible, he's holding the phone with his right hand. Uh, Froch comes across with a with a right cross around the side of the head, goes to the back of Ward's head. Ward is completely untouched. And then here you see Ward finish off with a, a light uh, kind of jab as he peels off and avoids that right hand. So this is just, it just, just summarizes one fighter being completely outclassed by another one. 
Um, and Ward just completely beat this guy on the night. Just quicker, better skills, better boxing IQ. Everything was better. Uh, so, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Um, and uh, on to the next one. Judges at ringside, John Stewart and Craig Metcalf, both scored about 115 to 113. Judge John Keane sees about 118 to 110. All three in favor of the winner. He is now the Super Six World Boxing Classic Champion. He is now the unified WA and WBC Super Middleweight Champion of the World, Andre S.O.G. By eight points on John Keane. Pass security, what the fuck do you need glasses? Just to see me when I'm coming full speed, got that beat 12 running. And I'ma jump the fence if I see 12 coming. Even if I were blind, I could still smell money.